Today's tip is going to be proper receiver placement and antenna placement in your model aircrafts to ensure safe and successful flights time and time again. Hello everyone, welcome back to Motion RC. I'm James with another quick tip. Today's tip is going to be about proper receiver placement and antenna placement in your model aircrafts to ensure safe and successful flights time and time again. A lot of beginners to RC flying might not even realize just how crucial uh, placement of your RC receiver is in your aircraft, but basically this video hopefully, without getting too technical into the why this is the case, but hopefully this will show you some proper setups and some not so proper setups to ensure those safe and successful flights. Depending on how you have your receiver placed in the aircraft, you want to make sure that one antenna on your receiver is always in communication with your transmitter at all times. When we're flying, our plane goes through various orientations and there are things sometimes in our aircraft that can create noise or that can block the signal and that's what we hope to avoid. Remember, most RC uh, receivers like these two here, one of our admirals and one from Fruit Taba will have at least two antennas on it and we want to make sure at all times one of these antennas is in full sight with your transmitter and that will guarantee uh, a good signal strength as you go through and then some receivers even add a satellite you can buy for your receivers and that adds what we call diversity extra diversity on your aircraft so now you have more potential uh, communication points from your transmitter to your receiver. So let's get started with some quick do's and don'ts of RC receiver placement in your model aircraft. Now one of the first things you want to make sure of when mounting your receiver is that your receiver is firmly mounted. Whether it's with double sided tape or however you want to mount it, you never want to have your receiver loose inside of your model aircraft. A loose receiver in a model aircraft could cause all sorts of problems with your receiver signal because as your receiver moves around within the canopy of your airframe while you're doing all sorts of aerobatic maneuvers, eventually it could get into a position that causes signal loss which will lead to a crash. So always mount your receiver firmly wherever you're going to place it. The next step is the placement of your antenna wires. Remember, majority of RC receivers will have two antennas and we want to make sure that they are 90 degrees apart from each other. You never want your antennas working in the same plane of existence. Without getting too technical, by placing them 90 degrees apart, regardless of the orientation, whether one's forward and down or one's left to back, it doesn't matter, but what it will do is make sure that at least one antenna will be able to see the transmitter and receive the transmitter signal at all times. If you place your antennas together, then you are only limiting the amount of receiver signal that you can pick up from your transmitter, which could eventually lead to a crash. So always mount your antennas 90 degrees apart from each other. Now another crucial step is we want to avoid conductive materials. Remember, these are just electrical signals, so if they are touching things that are conductive to electricity, it could create all sorts of problems in your aircraft. So what are the things that we need to look out for? Your lithium polymer battery. Your transmitter signal cannot penetrate a lithium polymer battery. So if both your antennas are behind a battery, if you're in that orientation where the battery is now between your transmitter and your antennas on your receiver, you will lose signal. A lot of times our aircraft have metal and carbon reinforcement in the fuselage. So if you see that within the canopy, you never want to tape off an antenna to one of these things. If you do, again, it cre could create noise within your antenna, create a weak signal strength, and you will crash your model. Next, when talking about the 90 degree placement that we just spoke of, you also want to make sure that your antenna wires are as far apart within that 90 degrees as possible. You can easily mount them 90 degrees very close to one another, but that isn't going to create as much diversity as you want as it would if they are far apart. So you want to try to get those antenna wires as far apart in any 90 degree plane of existence as you can to help strengthen your receiver's signal strength. Next, you want to avoid sharp bends in your antennas. You never want to crimp them or fold them in any sort of way because that, again, RF signals are funny like that. You always want to let them go where they want to go. 
And then lastly, remember there are also satellite receivers available for a lot of receivers out there. They are a plug-in attachment that allows for more diversity. You get more antennas which you can mount in other positions from each other to help ensure that your transmitter will always see your receiver and you will have a better signal. Now that's up to you if you want to go that route. Um, not everybody does but it can always add more insurance when you're flying to uh, just know that you won't ever have a potential brownout or signal loss. So there you have it guys. Those are some quick do's and don'ts on how to properly mount your receiver in your model aircraft to ensure safe and successful flights time and time again. Just remember, when it comes down to mounting your receiver, what we're trying to do here is make sure that your antennas at all times can see your transmitter uh, regardless the orientation that your aircraft is in. So every model is different. You're gonna have to look at your model specifically, look around, figure out ways, and then the la once you have it mounted, the most important thing next will be a range check and that's we're going to do a proper range check in a future quick tip video but you want to range check your model in all the orientations to make sure that your transmitter is picking up that rx signal so range check range check range check would be the next step before you ever uh take off from the ground but that'll do it for this quick tip guys anybody have any other uh practices best practices for mounting your receivers in your aircraft drop them in the comments section below and as always we'll see you next time with another quick tip